So I get asked a lot about how I decide where I put ornamentation in a tune. Triplets, trebles, slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs, chords, variation. There's loads of different options and there's lots of different places that you can put them. So what I've done is I've taken one bar of one tune and I have ornamented it in a ton of different ways. It's a jig called the Cool A Jig. The fully transcribed version of the tune, actually it's in four different versions because I've done simple, you know, basic ornamentation, intermediate, and then a ridiculous kind of expert level stuff with all of the bells and whistles. That's on my Patreon, Enda Scahill Banjo. But I've also done this video, which is a bag of licks, like what they do in bluegrass music, which is basically a ton of different ways to interpret one bar. And I think it's pretty amazing how many different ways you can play one bar. And by varying the ornamentation, the triplets and the trebles, you can make it different every single time. But it also will help you to build up a repertoire of little licks that you can use in other tunes and other places in this tune as well. So this is the Kool-Aid Jig, Bag of Licks, fully notated and transcribed on my Patreon, Endoscahal Banjo. Hope to see you over there. So, as a bag of licks, as they call it in the bluegrass world, which is a whole load of different ornamented ideas for just one specific part of a tune, we're going to use the first two bars of the second part of the Kool-Aid jig. In its basic format, it is this. Okay, so there's a load of ways to approach that first bar. That's a more complicated one with uh, double stopped triplets. Like, of course, if you're doing it slowly, you could do a really nice chord at the end. That speed is a little bit harder. Now, there's a good bit of pick work involved in that one. So, some of those that we've played leaning into the note. So putting the uh, emphasis on the note below the note in the tune. So the, the note in the tune. And so we're going to lean up into it by doing a half stop, a half note below it. The expansion of that then is to move that uh, little sequence uh, around the chord structure. of uh, triplets, so doubling the initial triplet. A little, little run up from the C natural. You can run up from the B. Or just on the, the C sharp, so a kind of a double. Well, they all yeah, give a very similar uh, effect. dropping it down to the, the low D as well, which is a different effect. The second bar starts in, the, in, 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 in an A, which is why this one works, because at the bottom notes essentially are, are creating a counter melody that are moving towards the A chord. So 
do a triplet and then a run up. So that's leaving the first bar fairly straightforward. And sometimes just a long note is the way to, to approach it. If you give a little shake of the band of your neck, you'll get some of that. Uh, like a vibrato in a sense. Can you hear that? Also, it looks cool. Um, again with the syncopation. It's not really syncopation, but it's a uh, you're changing the uh, your emphasis onto the second note of the three, so it gives the feeling of syncopation, I guess. from making it very complicated so worth noting as well the two different ways of doing a triplet which is to put the one one two three we're putting the one we we'll call it the long note putting the long note first da -da -da -da, or putting it second and you get a different vibe from each of them so with the long note first it's a little bit more legato and kind of laid back swingy kind of a vibe if you put the triplet first and the long note after, it creates more of a sense of urgency. At least in my mind, anyway. There's very subtle differences, but here's with the le leaning note on the C sharp. Without the leading C uh, or F natural note. For simplicity. So the first uh, chord is in, uh, the first bar is in the key of D, the second one is in A. So essentially, any of the notes that are in the key, the triad of D, will work. An A on the seventh fret. It doesn't work as well because you're going to A afterwards, so it doesn't really have the kind of dramatic effect of the chord change. I guess that one is so nice because of the passing note. Sounds a little bit like a fiddle cut, 
I'm going to play it slowly first, is uh, to use the little pinky on the, on the D sharp. subtle. You could also achieve that by moving your middle finger up to the D and using your ring finger for the D sharp if that's easier. And there's plenty of room and time to do that. That just gives the hint of that D sharp. Which is nice when it resolves then to the open E. just goes to show how many different ways you can play possibly the simplest bar ever which is when you think about it there's the original notes and you have all of these options between chords and ornaments and you know kind of hinting at syncopation So there's a load of little ideas there and perhaps if you learn each of them individually you'll find other ways and other places to apply those throughout that tune and other tunes as well. So there is a veritable bag of licks. I don't know if they call them licks in Irish music but uh, it's a good phrase so let's go for it.